hips, knees, heels, and toes. So we've been uh, looking at walks from the point of view of forces and weight and the reaction force of the ground. But another way to analyze walks is to think about the energy that's required uh, during walking. Now, this is uh, helpful because many of the uh, actions that we perform, unconsciously, we're doing these because it helps us walk more efficiently. It reduces our energy expenditure during a walk. Now, to appreciate this, you should try walking around as uh, John Cleese does as the minister of silly walks. So uh, if you're familiar with this uh, Monty Python routine, uh, if you walk around like John Cleese, you'll find that you need a lot of um, energy to do that. Let me give you uh, an example of myself doing a silly walk. So here uh, you realize this is a very inefficient way of walking, and not only does it draw attention to yourself, but if you uh, spent just a half hour a day walking like this, you'd get a tremendous amount of exercise. This is uh, really uh, exhausting. Uh, just in this uh, little uh, short stroll outside, I was uh, beat. Now, um, a very simple model of walking, which you might imagine is uh, basically how we walk, would be to have the legs uh, moving straight and uh, the hips perpendicular. Uh, so something like you see here in this uh, mechanical model. Now this is a rather inefficient way of uh, walking. It's uh, not as inefficient as silly walking, but it's still not very efficient because the center of gravity uh, rises and falls significantly and we have to do work every time we raise it and we lose most of that uh, energy uh, when it drops. So um, here's what that sort of simplified walking model would look like. It's almost like the Frankenstein uh, walk. So very uh, unnatural way of walking. And here's that uh, mechanical uh, figure from um, side view and uh, top view. So we'll be using this to uh, analyze uh, some of the nuances of walking. So uh, the first um, thing that the body naturally does in order to walk more efficiently is to rotate the pelvis. So the um, as the moving leg is moving forward, uh, that side of the pelvis rotates uh, with it and the hip that's uh, on that side uh, moves uh, forward. Uh, see the difference between keeping the hips perpendicular to the legs and um, rotating the, the hips. So here's uh, what that looks like um, doing just the pelvic rotation. Now, this is a bit unnatural because I'm not um, moving the shoulders. We'll talk about uh, shoulder rotation in another tutorial. Uh, but uh, just rotating the pelvis makes walking more efficient because in the contact pose, uh, the center of gravity doesn't drop down as far when we do a pelvic rotation compared to if we don't rotate the pelvis. Uh, so basically keeping the same length of step, uh, the uh, pelvic rotation essentially uh, lengthens, lengthens that so that um, we don't have to angle the legs quite as far and so the center of gravity does not drop quite as far with the pelvic rotation. Now the other thing that we do, and this helps uh, during the passing position, is to drop the pelvis slightly on the non-weight-bearing side, in other words, the side where, that has the moving leg. Now this is called a pelvic list. Uh, the word list here is 
means a tilting to the side, like when a boat lists to one side. Uh, something else which happens uh, during the pelvic lift, because the moving leg uh, is on the side where the pelvis is dropping, uh, you need to bend the knee a bit to keep the uh, leg from dragging on the ground. Now, the pelvic list also um, makes walking more efficient because uh, normally in the passing position, the center of gravity rises um, to its highest point, and by uh, dropping uh, the pelvis a bit, that uh, flattens the path of action of the center of gravity, and so the um, uh, we don't have to raise it as much, which means we don't have to expend as much energy in the process of raising it. Now, one more uh, thing that we do naturally when we're walking is uh, we actually also bend the other knee, the knee that is uh, on the um, on the leg that's on the ground. Uh, that uh, knee flexes uh, for about uh, at about 15 degrees, starting uh, just about at the uh, heel strike, and it remains flexed until the uh, center of gravity has uh, passed uh, over the uh, weight-bearing leg. In other words, the uh, passing position. So uh, this uh, knee flexion of that uh, leg further helps to um, keep the center of gravity from rising as much uh, in the passing position. Now, uh, one more thing that uh, the body can take advantage of having a heel and toes, uh, we want the leg to be long uh, in the contact pose, uh, but we want it to be uh, not quite as long in the passing position. So the heel essentially extends the length of the leg you see in this uh, diagram. It's as if the leg was a little bit uh, longer by having a heel, but then uh, in the passing position the foot goes flat, uh, the knee uh, flexes a bit, that's the knee flexion we were just talking about, and so the center of gravity doesn't go up quite as far uh, in the passing position. And then uh, in the next contact pose, uh, to keep the center of gravity from uh, dropping as far, we have the uh, toes which again uh, extend the effective uh, length of the leg. Uh, in the contact uh, pose. Now, having said all of that, uh, if we have a character that has lots of energy, is uh, peppy and happy and excited, then uh, they won't necessarily uh, do these actions because they're not trying to minimize their up and down motion because they've got um, they've got plenty of energy. So uh, there, here's a character that's uh, peppy and energetic, and uh, as you see him uh, walking around, he's not um, bothering with uh, trying to keep his center of gravity on a very even uh, trajectory. He, uh, he's he got lots of energy to spare. Now, a character that was very tired and um, was moving slowly from being fatigued, then um, a character like that with very little energy uh, would keep uh, all of these uh, elements that we've just uh, talked about in order to uh, walk very efficiently and keep a very uh, flat center of gravity uh, for their path of action. So in uh, summary, the uh, hips, knees, heels, and toes help us to walk uh, more efficiently. Uh, pelvic uh, rotation reduces the downward motion of the center of gravity uh, in the uh, contact pose. Pelvic uh, list reduces the upward motion of the center of gravity through the passing position. Uh, knee flexion also uh, keeps the center of gravity uh, lower in the uh, passing position. And uh, finally, the heels and the toes 
uh, increase and decrease the effective length of the leg uh, when we need the um, we, we need these uh, changes of the leg length uh, specifically in the uh, contact pose. So hopefully that uh, helps you understand the nuances of um, pelvic rotation and what the knees and the heels and the toes are doing in a walk.